All right, Bobcats, so welcome back to Acosta's Anatomy. I'm Travis Ray, and in this lecture, we're going to discuss epinephrine. So what does epinephrine do? So epinephrine is a catabolic hormone that mimics the response of the sympathetic nervous system. And so in this video, what we're going to discuss is, first off, how is epinephrine synthesized, uh, what's its target tissue, and then what is the effect that it has once it reaches that tissue. So the first thing that we're going to discuss is where is epinephrine released from? So within the adrenal medulla, so the keyword adrenal medulla, not the adrenal cortex. So if you look here at this model, this is the adrenal gland. The cortex is here on the outside. The adrenal medulla is here on the inside. Okay. So Epinephrine is released from the adrenal medulla and then it reaches its target tissue. But first off, how does it get to the point where we get the release of epinephrine? So the first thing that we have to do is stimulate the hypothalamus. So for instance, if you see a bear, right, or you see a tiger, whatever, it's chasing after you and you got to get away from it, we stimulate the um, we stimulate sympathetic nervous system, but um, epinephrine is going to be released here into the blood. So for the, from the hypothalamus, from there, the signal is going to be transmitted along the spinal cord. And so if we look here at a cross section of the spinal cord, this is where, this is the location of our preganglionic, preganglionic neuron. So you have the preganglionic neuron here, which will synapse within the adrenal medulla. And so within this adrenal medulla, this is where we have something that's known as the chromaffin cells. And within these chromaffin cells, this is where we have our postganglionic, postganglionic motor neuron. So I can also write that preganglionic, so motor neuron. Okay, so that, that, that's what I have drawn over here, right? This is a, a chromaffin cell, and then this is a motor neuron. So how is epinephrine synthesized? Well, we use an amino acid which is known as tyrosine. So this is what tyrosine looks like. So you have this cyclic ring here, and then you also have this OH group or this hydroxyl group here. So Within the adrenal medulla, we have these enzymes that will synthesize our catecholamines. So this fancy term, what is a catecholamine? So this here, this is what's known as a catechol group. So this is the catechol part. And then the amine includes this aspect over here. So you have NH2, and then there's also another hydroxyl group here. So the main difference between epinephrine and norepinephrine is just that. So for this one, this would be um, norepinephrine, and then epinephrine would just have a methyl group here, so this CH3. And then that, that would change from here to NH. So yeah, we're synthesizing, we're synthesizing um, epinephrine using tyrosine as our starting material. Okay, so then what happens once we get that signal and then the epinephrine or the norepinephrine is released from the adrenal medulla, it gets into the blood and then it travels to its target tissue. So the different target tissue include the heart, muscle, liver, fat, and then also the bronchioles. Well, how does all of this happen? So the effect that epinephrine has on the heart, it's going to increase our heart rate and it also increases blood pressure. Well, Travis, how does that work? So if this here is the heart muscle, so what this is actually going to represent, so this is representing what's known as the, for instance, the SA node. So the SA node is within the heart. And we've already learned that the SA node, what it does is it controls the electrical signals uh, within the heart. Okay, so when epinephrine binds to its receptor here, so we can do that. So when epinephrine binds to its receptor, it stimulates something that we are very familiar with. So what happens? We have an increase in our cyclic AMP, we, which will then activate what's known as a protein 
I'm going to put it, draw it down this way, which will then activate something known as protein kinase A. We activate the protein kinase A, and then here at the top surface of, for this SA node, we have a couple of different channels here. So you have, so you have these calcium channels, and then you also have those sodium channels here. So as a result, activating this protein kinase A, we add phosphate groups to the calcium channel as well as the sodium channel. As a result, we get an influx of calcium, and then we get an influx of sodium, and what occurs? What happens here? Depolarization, right? So if we get depolarization, this electrical signal's getting transmitted more rapidly, so we can um, increase the heart rate. Okay, so that's for the SA node. But then what about within the heart? You also have just the cardiac, uh, the myocytes themselves. So within the myocytes are those muscle cells and within the heart, same thing's gonna happen here. So we get binding of epinephrine and then as a result, what, what, what occurs? We increase cyclic AMP, we'll activate our protein kinase A. What does it do? It adds phosphate groups to things. And so for the, uh, for the myocytes, we have this calcium channel, which is here. So it'll add a phosphate group. That calcium will flow here into this myocyte. And then also we have the myosin proteins here. Remember the myosin is responsible for that cross bridge cycle. So by adding a phosphate group to that myosin, we can, that cross bridge cycle can occur more rapidly and those ventricles can contract at a more rapid rate. Um, as far as uh, blood pressure is concerned, one of the effects that it has is that it helps to constrict it. So by constricting that blood vessel, it increases the resistance and then blood pressure increases as well. Okay, so now let's move on to the muscle and the liver. So what occurs within the muscle and the liver? So epinephrine binds here to its receptor and then the overall goal here, what we're trying to do is increase the blood glucose levels. So glycogen, oh, lysis is gonna occur. So we're gonna break down the glucose. Well, how does that happen? Well, we do the same thing we've been doing. We're gonna increase our cyclic AMP. We'll activate our protein kinase A. And then from there, this will activate something that is, which is known as glycogen phosphorylase. This is an enzyme, and what it does, it helps to break down glycogen into glucose, right? Because that's the whole purpose here. With glycogenolysis, we're trying to increase our blood glucose levels. So once again, this is what's occurring here within the muscle and the liver. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, what occurs here uh, within these fat cells. So something, once again, very familiar. We activate, we increase the cyclic AMP by binding there, activate PKA. Um, from there, what's gonna happen is we're gonna activate something which is known as hormone sensitive lipase. So you have hormone synthesis, uh, hormone sensitive lipase. And so once again, this is here in the fat cells or adipose cells and then as a result we're going to increase the fatty acids and then the glycerol so then the fatty acids will then get into the blood so lipolysis occurs here and then these by byproducts here can be used for the muscle fuel All right, because we're trying to uh, meet the energy demands right to get away from that bear to get away from the tiger okay so the last thing for the bronchioles, we are not going to get into the um, specific mechanism. However, we've already identified the smooth muscles that are found there on those bronchioles. And so whenever epinephrine, norepinephrine, once they bind to the receptors there within those bronchioles, what's gonna happen, those airways, they're gonna dilate. Once they dilate, then we'll, uh, more air will be allowed into the lungs, right? So that way, the oxygenation process can occur. All right, so that's gonna do it for epinephrine.